Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this electrical vlog I'm going to be talking about rising mains and the reason that I want to talk about this is that you may have noticed that some DNOs have stopped offering the um, internal distribution within multi-occupancy buildings. So when uh, you ask for a new connection or when you ask for a quote for a new connection they'll quote for the supply to the building but others will have to do the distribution within the building. So that, that means the, uh, the sub mains or the lateral mains that go from the intake position to each part of the installation. So for example, if you've got a block of flats and you've, ha and you've got an incoming supply and then it goes to a rye field unit, for example, the distribution from there will have to be done by another contractor. And that will be the responsibility of what's called a BNO, which is a building network operator. Now the BNO could be, uh, it could be the landlord, it could be the building owner, it could be a, a DNO or it could be an IDNO, which is an independent DNO. But the work could be done by an electrical contractor in accordance with BS 7671. But the thing that I really want to point out to you is that there are additional requirements to bear in mind. And these recommendations are specified in the Energy Networks Association Engineering Recommendation G87. So this document specifically talks about the distribution within multiple occupancy buildings. And it lays out some specific guidelines. And one of them is, is that it's designed in accordance with BS7671 and the uh, ESQCR, the Electricity Supply Quality and Continuity Regulations. But there are some specific uh, requirements that are in the engineering recommendation that need to be taken into account. So it's really, really important to bear in mind. And so one tip that I'll give to any electrical contractor is that if you are ever asked by a customer to install a, uh, the distribution between the origin of a block of flats to each individual flat, for example, it also applies to commercial premises as well. Please bear in mind the engineering recommendation G87 and have a look at the requirements that are in there. there, there some uh, requirements are things like um, the distribution circuits have to be rewirable and accessible. So you, you can't um, conceal them within the fabric of the building. You can't run them through other properties that you won't have access to later. It has to be completely rewirable. Another requirement that I mentioned in my previous video where I spoke about PME earthing is where the incoming supply to a block of flats is a PME earthing arrangement. Then the distribution cables from the origin to the flats have to be a separate neutral earth. And the reason for this is to prevent circulating neutral currents within the installation. So you have a PME uh, supply coming in at the origin, but then separate neutral earth in the distribution to the individual flats. So that's very, very important to bear that in mind. So if you read the document, it says that it was introduced to establish common requirements for buildings of multiple occupancy. And the aim is to clarify the roles and the responsibilities. So it really feels that the gray areas between what kind of work that the DNO is usually responsible for and what kind of work electricians are responsible for is changing. And so the best advice that I would give to anybody, if you're ever asked to do an installation in a uh, in a block of flats and if you're asked to do the rising mains from the installation to the individual blocks of flats is to have a read of this engineering recommendation G87 and to really um, sort of understand the, the requirements of that. Um, obviously BS 7671 and the building regulations apply and they're mentioned in the en engineering recommendation. I hope you found this video useful. If so, please give us a like and please subscribe.